guys? Austin Groucho here, and so we're gonna do a movie review now of the Guardians of the Galaxy movie volume two. So we just saw it for the second time. Um, of course, saw it opening night well, on Thursday, whatever you call it, and then we saw it again on Friday night tonight that we're doing this and stuff. Um, so we saw it twice. We did the first time, and we're kind of unsure about the movie with like you know knowledge of stuff and everything. So with research and seeing the movie again, we. Um, have more knowledge about what's going on and stuff like that so we're gonna get into it now so of course we're gonna do a normal thing with spoiler free in the first part and then spoilers in the second part and stuff like that so go ahead and start with spoiler free um, so overall I thought the movie was good just as good as the first one so if you enjoyed the first one you'll like the second one um, all the characters are you know just as good as they were you of course have Star Lord Gamora Drax Groot and Rocket which were the originals from the first movie. So you have all them back again, um, kind of expanding more on their characters. They get a lot more like each, well, besides Groot, um, each more like individual, like until their back, I'd say somewhat backstory, but like their deeper feelings and stuff like that. And then um, you also get the addition of, uh, of course, Yondu, um, Nebula, and Mantis and stuff into the group too. But anything else more than that would be like spoiled stuff. Um, but yeah, I thought the movie overall was pretty good. Um, I really enjoyed it. Of course, there's a lot of comedy in the movie, which I think is great because it's... I consider uh, Guardians to be like a Marvel movie making a Star Wars movie type thing. So you have a lot of like Star Wars aspects but with like superheroes and stuff like that more mixed in than you do just Star Wars stuff. Um, but... It, uh, I really like the like scenes and stuff and the like all the graphics and everything. They do really nice like dr uh, like the planet designs and stuff and space and the spaceships and everything. Each planet is, is individual and stuff and of course they go across multiple different planets and everything and each one's different and unique and they're all um, amazing like works and stuff like that that you could possibly think were real somewhere out in space and stuff. So I think that's very interesting. Um, Trying to think of what else can say. Do you have anything to say? Uh, they brought in some other characters to kind of expand the space universe. Yeah. And the overall uh, beings in the universe, like some of the higher powers, especially since they're going to be focusing more on Thanos. Yeah. Um, so, of course, with the first Guardians, you had that where you, they... I don't know how to say it. Like, Guardians wasn't a well-known property, like, to across the board, you know, like, more like Iron Man, Hulk, and stuff like those people. And so, the first movie was kind of like, they just kind of threw it out there to see how it would do. And, of course, it got a great reaction and stuff. So, this time, they did that again, but they threw in all these other characters that, you know, I never heard of before. Um, Bro has, hadn't heard of some of them, but after looking up, you know, we realized who they were and stuff like that. But there were, like, characters we didn't even know and they went deep into the marvel universe for this stuff uh, which was cool and then so you got some uh other new characters like thrown in so you had some more of the um what Re reavers yeah yeah Re forget them and ravengers from the x-men movie thing um so you have the, that group and then you have um the sovereign group of the gold people you have ego um, of course, the other characters added in that I already mentioned. And then you get the um, an expanded group of Reavers as well thrown in there too. And so you just get a, um, a lot more characters packed in along with our main characters of people. They brought Howard the Duck back oh, yeah. for They're, a scene. Yeah, that's... Boring. And then... Uh, you get to see Howard the Duck. He's part of nothing. But you get to see him like you did at the end of the last Guardians movie. And then you get to see the Watchers, which was cool because yeah. that was unexpected by me. Yeah, they're um, a big, not like a huge part, I would say, but they are part of the Marvel Universe stuff. Um, they are involved in a lot of things. Um, and then, of course, uh, you get, um trying to think of what I'm trying to say now. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, but like I said, you get a lot of great comedy. Like, there's some that's kind of like a... You just kind of chuckle at things, but then there's a lot that's funny. Groot is just amazing. Like, if you don't, like, fall in love with Groot or get some sort of happy emotion just from seeing him, there's something wrong with you. And I'd say out of comedy-wise, though, like, Drax kind of steals the show in that part 
with all his funny stuff that he says and does. Um, Rocket, to me, at parts was a little annoying. That's just my personal thing. I mean, I still like him and enjoy, enjoy him, but some of the stuff he says is just kind of like, like a third grader trying to insult you or something like that. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but that was awesome. The whole, like, ego story stuff is pretty, like, it's weird. But it's cool at the same time with, like, um, what you find out that's going on and stuff. But it's weird, and, like, we both agree that when it gets to that point of the movie, it's kind of, like, boring or lawish and stuff like that. It's like, okay, are they ever going to get through this stuff? But yet it's um, good at the same time, too. Um, I think you summed it up best when you compared it to The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, so, like I said, this movie, like, just watching the first time or like, drew a lot of memories to, um, Empire Strikes Back, of course, the Star Wars movie and stuff, just as, um, Empire is not my favorite movie, just because of the whole Luke on Dagobah part, because I just think it's boring, like, I love Yoda and everything, so I like that stuff, but when he's, uh, every time he's on Dagobah, I'm just like, okay, come on, are we gonna get through all this, and then, like, just like in Star Wars, everything that's going on during that time is, you know, like, good, but it's boring stuff, like with the whole Han, Lei, and stuff, um, trying to outrun the Empire and stuff like that. That's like the other characters and stuff they're doing. It's like, okay, let's get on with this stuff. Um, but other than that, the movie's like enjoyable. Like I said, that stuff's bo like slow and boring, but it's still good at the same time. And then, of course, we have uh, five end credit scenes, which we'll go through in the spoiler um, part. Um, but I don't know of anything else. Spoiler free. Do you, do you have any last thing? Um, so I guess we got nothing else. So if you're wondering about seeing, of course, go see. If you saw the first one, you'll like this one. That's pretty much it. Um, so now we'll go to um, our spoilers. So this is your spoiler warning. Okay, so now we're going to get in the spoilers. Um, so let's see where to start. Um, so we'll just talk. Uh, start with Ego. Um, so Ego, of course, um, I always knew him as the living planet, like, since I was started getting like into comic books stuff like that, it's big Marvel poster. And Ego was always just a planet out up in the distance of the sky. The poster, and he just has you know an eyes and a mouth and nose and all that sort of stuff. Just Ego, the living planet, is what he's known as. Well, in this movie, um, he was a planet, but of course he was played by Kurt Russell in a human form, um, which I only ever knew him as a planet. But I guess he does do a human uh, form. And uh, so in this movie, yeah, he's played by Kurt Russell, of course, who um, back in the 70s or whatever met uh, Peter Quill's mom or Star-Lord, as you know, um, his mom and then impregnated her and uh, to have Peter and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and so, of course, they did with that. They did do um, Kurt Russell, I think, really good as a young person. I mean, you could definitely tell it was fake, obviously, because Kurt Russell's not that young. But I thought it still looked pretty decent. Um but so he's um, Peter's dad, and so he meets Peter, takes him back to his planet of himself or whatever. And, of course, he, you find out that he's like a brain at the center of the planet that grew out through um, being able to control molecules and stuff like that and form himself into a planet and then turn himself into a human and stuff like that to be able to go out and find um, other aliens and stuff like that to be able to grow his power over the universe and stuff like that by having another person just like him, which is what uh, Star-Lord was and stuff. Um, so I like that whole thing of introducing Star-Lord's dad and making him this bigger being trying to like take over the world. And his dad has always been like a weakness to him. And so now he finally gets to meet him and find that he's not, you know, someone he cares for or anything like that. Um, and then I guess uh, Yondu, so like you learn that Yondu was supposed to deliver Peter to Ego, um, but once he uh, Yondu found out that he was killing like the, his kids if they didn't have the power uh, to help him, you know, grow his or expand his control or whatever, um, Yondu just kept him for himself and then kind of raised him as his own kid and stuff, and by doing these drop-offs to Ego, um, he got in trouble with the Reavers group or whatever, and so they kicked him out. Um, <clears throat> and we'll get to that in the uh, 
uh, end credit scene in just a minute and stuff. But you get a um, really strong connection to Yondu, um, seeing that he was actually doing good stuff the whole time and everything. And then, of course, his group turns on him with the leader of Taserface, um, which was pretty cool. Or, I guess, pretty cool stuff. Taserface was a funny name with a weird-looking guy. And we actually do have a book here, which we'll get into more. Um, but it's an old comic book thing. And there's actually a picture of Taserface right there. I don't know if you can see. I can't see the thing. But there's a picture of what Taserface looks like in the um, original comics and stuff like that. Of course, he just looks like a human with, like, a just burnt and destroyed face and then, like, a mohawk of long hair type thing and stuff. So... Um, that's just what he looks like um, in the old comics and everything. Um, but, of course, he doesn't last very long, which is kind of disappointing and stuff like that. Or, not, I don't know, disappointing, but surprising that he didn't last very long and stuff. So you have them, and then, of course, you have the Sovereign, which are, like I said, the gold people. Um, that, of course, the Guardians are trying to pr help protect something that they're hired to protect. And then Rocket ends up stealing these battery things from them, and so now they're after him trying to get them back and stuff like that. Um, and so they're chasing after the Guardians, as well as the Reavers that are trying to, um, with Yondu and stuff, trying to uh, catch them or whatever for the bounty because they get hired by the Sovereign people. So they're after that, and then, of course, Ego, which turns out to be bad and stuff. So you have all these people um, chasing after them, and then, of course, stuff takes effect or whatever. And then um, they're all just fighting uh, Ego and stuff, and then the Sovereign people get destroyed, or their ships do. And so um, the Queen Lady, I think her name's Aisha or something like that, is trying to like figure out how to... Uh, she wants to get revenge, kind of, so then that comes up in a post credits scene. Um, so did you have anything beyond the post credits that you wanted to Not really. mention? Not really. Okay. Um, so now we'll go into the post credit scene. So, of course, there were five of them. Um, the first one was uh, the Kilgan or something. I forget how you say his name. Um, but he's played by, what is it, James Gunn's brother or yeah. something like that. And so he was like a really close guy to Yondu. Of course, he helped turn um, the group against Yondu and stuff. Um, but then at the end, he like realized what Yondu was doing and... Um, helped him out again and stuff. And so uh, Star-Lord, at the very end, since Yondu does die, which I forgot to mention that part, um, he gives him the uh, his arrow, Yondu's arrow. And so in the end credit scene, he puts um, the fin on his head that Yondu wears, but we, uh, Bro pointed it out that when they, they like burnt Yondu and like spread his ashes or whatever out in the space, and his fin got burned up with this, we don't know if he, it was an extra fin just laying around or what the whole deal with that was, but or if it was just a miss part or something like that. But he's testing or, or like trying to whistle to get the arrow to fly, and he finally gets it going, and it um, lands into Drax's chest or something like that, and Drax starts yelling, and he just takes off. So that's the first end credit scene. The second one was um, the uh, Reavers group. So Yondu's original group that he mentions that he got kicked out of by doing the delivery things to Ego and stuff like that. And then once he left, that group disbanded and had all their own groups and stuff like that. So at the very end, that group's all back together. And so that's why we have this original comic, or this old comic and stuff. And so um, the leader is Sylvester Sloan's character, which he plays um, Stark or something like that. I don't know how to say his name for sure. Um, but he plays um, Starhawk, which is this character here. And so it, the only like close semblance is that Starhawk has... Uh, the like um, bands, I think they're coming off his head. It looks like in here, where um, Sylvester Sloan has like two bands coming off his shoulders and stuff. So that's his character, and then you have uh, Bing Rhames who plays Charlie Twenty Seven, which that's him in the um, comic version. So the big guy here, and then um, with Starhawk or what I get, whatever his name is, which is what he goes by, or Strack, maybe is what it is in the movie. He has a guy with him named uh, Martin X, Martin X, something like that, and he's like a glass figure, so he looks kind of like Emma Frost in the uh, X-Men movie stuff. Then, of course, you have Yondu, which, again, was a part of the um, old original group and stuff like um, stuff there. And then there's this girl, which she wasn't in the movie, I don't think, and then neither was uh, Vance Astro. But you did also have... Um, Another person who is in here, um, this Aletta, which um, 
in the movie was some lady, I don't know, she was like wearing green and stuff, but this is supposedly supposed to be like his, um, Starhawk's wife or something, but it's also him, because it says like this, his, um, atoms liquefy into one another and creates a beautiful butterfly named Alita or whatever and stuff like that, so it's like him as one person, but in like stuff it's known as his wife or something, I don't know, that's kind of weird, um, but you have that, and then you also have the little robot head named Mainframe, which we found out was voiced by Miley Cyrus, so that's kind of weird and stuff like that. And then, um, so that's one of the old original uh, Guardians of the Galaxy groups. It's not the original, I don't believe, but it um, is one of the old ones. And there's something else in here. Oh, and then there was also, like, a green, like, dragon lizard guy, which supposedly he was a... Uh, um, took the place of Doctor Strange in, uh, at one point in time, but I can't remember where the thing is in here, but you have, um, the lay, I guess this is just a real small thing of it right here, you have, um, her, which is the, um, Aisha lady, so the Sovereign's, like, leader, and so then, um, you have Adam Warlock there, which is, I believe, the third, um, deleted scene, or X, not deleted scene, uh, in credit scene, is you get her saying that, um, talking to one of her, like, whatever, servants, that she's, um, about creating, like, a whole new, like, ultimate thing to get the revenge on the Guardians of the Galaxy, and so you see the giant life pod, or whatever pod type thing that Adam Warlock comes from, and she's like, I will call him Adam and stuff, so she creates him, and so that's him right there, or he's referred to as him, and then she's referred to as her, and stuff um so you have that and then uh and then the fourth end credit scene which was grew as a like teenager or whatever so of course they, they set up like a whole classic teenager scene type thing between him and star lord and then the last scene you have stanley um talking to the watchers which you saw the part earlier in the movie a small scene and this time he's talking and they start walking away from him, which again the walker or walker the watchers are people that have been involved through, like, out the Marvel history, and they're always there to witness, like, the different, like, major events that go on and stuff. And so he's sitting there talking to him, and there's been a rumor that he, that Stan Lee is a watcher, because that's why he's been in every single movie, because, uh, and, like, looks like he does, obviously, because he's old, but, um, that he's, you know, himself, and he's present through all points in time and stuff, watching all this, and... <coughs> He's sitting there telling him all this stuff he's watched because he mentions um, being like a UPS man or a mail delivery man or something like that, which he was in the um, Captain America Civil War when he delivered the package to Mr. Stank or whatever his name was um, that he called uh, Tony Stark. Um, and so that kind of, kind of like could say that he is a watcher or he could just be some random guy that just happens to be involved in all this stuff but i don't know of anything else did you have anything else to add nope okay so i think that's going to be it hopefully um if you've seen the movie you enjoy it. if you did let, let me know down below whether you enjoyed it or not um but leave any comments you have below leave a like if you enjoyed and hit that red subscribe button to see more and we'll see you next time